Pacific brought back to popularity the next present, the hula doll. The joy of every little girl. And the delight of boys from 6 to 60. favorite of the boys is an exciting array of wooden soldiers on parade. that wasn't under the Christmas tree was peace. A key factor in achieving peace is the control and use of atomic energy. Atoms have existed since the creation of the Earth, and for more than 2,000 years, man has been attempting to harness these atoms for his use. The greatest strides towards this end have been made in the last 50 years. Bits of information and thousands of discoveries began to be put together. Knowledge was piled upon knowledge until in 1945, a mushroom cloud of smoke. And from that smoke and rubble of Hiroshima and Nagasaki arose fresh hopes for a peaceful world. For with it came plans to control this tremendous source of energy. University of Michigan, this plan is called Productive Uses for Atomic Energy are being sought. Scientists, economists, and sociologists are working together to develop uses for atomic energy in our America. of American men gave the ultimate in the service of their country. To honor and glory, this research for peaceful use of atomic energy is dedicated. The goal of a better, fuller life for all mankind is but an extension of the ideals for which these American men laid down their lives. May God bless this land and bring peace on earth.
Ladies and gentlemen, that great American ballad, God Bless America. come more than 2,000 miles to do was done and done well. Michigan's football team found itself in the last quarter and won the game. Now the day was a complete success. The bandsmen forgot about sore lips, aching feet, and tired bodies. Newfound enthusiasm and energy burst forth and the band paraded the field and then marched out of the stadium. The traditional sign of victory, the hats worn backwards, was just another indication of a job well done. Professor Ravelli beamed happily with Waldo McNaught, the public relations director of Buick. It was his execution of Buick's plans that made the trip so enjoyable. Finally, the tired but happy bandsmen boarded buses and went directly to the special Santa Fe train. The big show was a rousing success, but more performances and parades were yet to come. The following day, the train arrived in San Francisco. Dean Walter Ray, faculty business manager of the band, gave each member some dinner money so that after the performance, the bandsmen could see the city and not on an empty stomach. In the morning, they marched down San Francisco's famous Market Street to show the local Californians what the Michigan band could do. Confetti rained down from many of the windows, welcoming the friendly emissaries from the University of Michigan. After the parade, the band went out to the Seal Stadium and performed the pre-game and halftime shows there as they were done the day before in the Rose Bowl. The next morning, the band paraded and again performed the Rose Bowl show at Fresno, California. Wherever there's a parade, there's a band, and work and drilling are as necessary for parades as for a football show. And of course, wherever there's a marching band, there's a drum major and twirlers. The drum major is Dick Smith a native of West Virginia. One of the twirlers, a national champion in his field, is Floyd Zarbach from Wheaton, Illinois. The other twirler is Sam Zor of Toledo, Ohio. At the Fresno State College Stadium, more than four people packed the stands. Many of them were high school musicians who were excused from classes that morning to pick up a few tips on how the Michigan band gets things done. An announcer, Press Holmes, who did the continuity for the band's performances, worked on the field instead of in the press box at Fresno. The band did a good job, and the high school musicians expressed their appreciation with vigorous applause. Once again, the bandsmen boarded the special train and began to realize that this western tour was rapidly coming to a close. But there was another thrilling experience the next morning Grand Canyon. The Michigan football team pulled into Grand Canyon Station shortly after the band train, and the bandsmen played a welcoming salute to the champions of the West. Then the band members set off to explore the awe-inspiring canyon. Some followed a path which ran along the rim, while others took a chartered bus trip to a lookout a few miles away. After a thorough examination, the bandsmen unanimously agreed 
that the Grand Canyon lived up to everything that had been said about it. The last scheduled stop for the marching band was at Wichita, Kansas. One final parade before winding up the tour which covered more than 5,000 miles and gave the band the nickname of the Transcontinental Michigan Marching Band. On this trip alone, more than three million people saw the band and countless other millions heard their music over national broadcasts, harassed by any college band. It was a cold and wintry day and brought the bandsmen down out of the clouds and dream world. The balmy breezes and warming sunshine of California were now only memories, only a handful of snapshots and a suitcase full of souvenirs. The majestic Rocky Mountains, the days at Occidental College, the Tournament of Roses Parade, the Rose Bowl, Albuquerque, San Francisco, Fresno, Wichita, the Grand Canyon, all now only memories. Vivid memories, however, of a once-in-a-lifetime experience that would not be soon forgotten.